Good morning to everybody. Let me share my file. Uh, do you, can you see my presentation, my file? Yes. Is it okay? Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. First of all, I have to thank you and welcome you to the session. And uh, thank you so much, uh, uh, Professor Tonaga, and also Professor uh, uh, Yorn for inviting me for this session. Uh, let me start my presentation. My presentation, as Professor Sonagot told, uh, is about Andalusia interactions with Azali's thoughts in mainly, but however, it covers also the intellectual interactions of East and West Mediterranean. It is a very good picture to see how these two uh, regions interact with each other during the medieval age. Uh, I am Mr. Muzaffari, and uh, I am HK research professor at the Institute uh, for Mediterranean Studies, Pusan University of Foreign Studies. And uh, so I have divided my uh, paper and my uh, presentation in three chapters. Uh, introduction is an overview on the region and the interactions uh, of the both region, that means east and west of the Mediterranean. Um, so it is a, a one a general overview uh, on interactions in general. And then uh, in the second chapter, uh, I talk about the Islamic schools of thought in the East and West both. I uh, talk about that, especially uh, with the reference to the Ghazali's era, uh, when Ghazali born and lived during that uh, age. And then I have divided this period uh, in three sections, uh, this chapter in three sections. Uh, uh, the first, uh, it will talk about currents uh, of thought in the East Mediterranean during the rise of um, Azali. And uh, second section, I am going to talk about the current of thought in Andalusia during that time. And at the third uh, level and third section, I am going to talk about <clears throat> Andalusian reaction towards uh, Ghazali's thoughts, and then finally conclusion. So this is the, in generally, I am following this uh, uh, roadmap. As we know, Arab uh, Muslims conquered the, the Persia uh, in 16, in 1633 uh, uh, and 1654. During this period, the Persian Empire has been conquered be, uh, with Muslims. And uh, uh, Muslims introduced the primary sources of Islam, that means the Quran and Sunnah to the region, like raw materials without any categorization. As we know <clears throat> that the six uh, important and main uh, sources of uh, hadith, all of them are uh, collected and categorized by, uh, by Persian scholars. So it was a very uh, important contribution to the categorization of the Islamic sources. In fact, it was a, a time to transfer the data to information. So they had really uh, contributed a lot to Islamic uh, studies and also Islamic uh, uh, science. 
after the widespread uh, of conversion of Persia, uh, Persians to Islam, the Persian cultural area, when we are talking about the um, Persian cultural area, it covers in the uh, vast area from the Indian uh, border today to the uh, to the Persian Gulf and to uh, also to Egypt and Libya up to certain points. So this is the very vast area which has been conquered by the Muslim at that time. So when we are talking about the Persian cultural area and civilization, because this area ruled by Persian for quite long time, almost more than thousand years they ruled. So they have many commonalities in culture and civilizations. So when we call the Persian cultural area, I mean this period, uh, the long period that they have created a common culture and civilization. So uh, after the widespread of conversion of Persian to, uh, to Islam, the Persian cultural area like fertile land gave, uh, gave rise to various school of thought. The people of Persia became the driving force of various Islamic thought and different school of arts, literature, interpretation, jurisprudence, philosophy, science, and mysticism. Most of the, uh, almost all these uh, schools of thoughts, uh, in fact, the uh, leader of all of them uh, are Persians, which I'm not going to talk about that because already you know everything about this. When North Africa and, uh, and Iberian Peninsula conquered by the uh, Muslim, the region were influenced by Eastern school of thought. So it was mainly contribution of uh, Persian uh, uh, scholars to that area. I'm going to the, after uh, uh, an overview about the region, and now I am going to, to the second chapter. The second chapter is about the current of thought in East and West Mediterranean in Ghazali's era. So in this chapter, uh, I have divided this chapter because I am talking about East and West Mediterranean. So uh, first I am going to talk about Islamic schools uh, in the east first, and then in the west, Andalusia and Morocco, and then I am going to see the reaction of Andalusian towards uh, Andalusia uh, towards uh, Al Ghazali's thoughts, and then conclusion. So here I am going to talk about the current of thought in the east uh, Mediterranean. Many Islamic schools had been formed in the East uh, Mediterranean, as I told you, especially in the Persian cultural area. The main schools such as Sunni and Shia, Ash'ari and Mu'tazala theological school, Islamic philosophy, mysticism, Sufism, interpretations inter uh, schools, and four famous school of jurisprudence, Hanafi, Shafi'i, Maliki, and Hanbali, all uh, has, been, uh, has uh, been taken form in this area, that means in the eastern part of Mediterranean in this area. So most of the, uh, these schools form here, and then from here after they conquered the Andalusia, then transferred all these information and thoughts to this part of the world. <clears throat> uh, current of thought in the Eastern, East and West of uh, Mediterranean in the time of Azali. 
So here I, I have also mentioned in the first, uh, in the, what is that in this slide, I have talked about the distribution of the uh, different uh, school of jurisprudence. That means this is the uh, Hanafi school, which covered all these areas to uh, Egypt, and then we have Shafi school, and also is covered up to these uh, areas. Today also almost uh, is the same, and we have Hanbalis are uh, are here in uh, Peninsula Arab uh, Arabia Peninsula, and then we have Maliki, which covered all this North Africa and especially the Morocco and Andalusia. And at that time, in fact, Fatimids also ruled during that period from some time from here to here, all covered by the uh, Fatimid rule. So uh, I will come to another uh, slide and we will talk about from the political aspect also, we will discuss the issue. So <clears throat> the current of thought in the East, uh, is the I am going to talk here several political uh, uh, political system also were ruling in this area uh, and during the this period that means period uh, that uh, Ghazali born and raised so the Kharaz Shahiyan, the Kharazbit Empire, were politically dominated in the West Asia. This area all uh, ruled by uh, Kharaz Shahiyan. And Abbasi Caliphate in Baghdad, it was not very uh, powerful at that time, even uh, politically, they were under the influence of Kharaz Shahiyan at that time. Uh, Abbasid Caliphate politically and ideologically were in competition with Fatimis. As I told you, Fatimi uh, ruled these areas. So uh, they were in competition and also they were in the weak position, in fact, at that time, the Abbasid. The Western Mediterranean, Morocco and Andalusia, I mean, was in turmoil at that time. And because uh, various tribes were competing uh, with each other to control their areas. So it was a dispute in these areas to get the power. That means power struggle were going during that time here politically. So uh, Ghazali was born in uh, this period. So fifth, almost fifth centuries of uh, Muslim uh, uh, calendar. He born in Tus, today Iran and Mashhad. So he born here. And uh, the area intellectually and religiously uh, was, uh, as I told you here in this area when he born, it was, uh, under the influence uh, of Shafi from the Fiqh school and also Hanafi politically were ruling all these areas. And uh, so from the Fiqh point of view, he was uh, under the influence of Hanafi, especially and Shafi. Politically was under the influence of Haraz Shahiyan and also Abbasid, especially Abbasid rule in Baghdad. So he raised in this atmosphere. Uh, Ghazali studies first at his hometown and then went in Nishabur here. He was born here and then went to Nishabur for studies. And he, uh, after he graduated, he became really very famous figure. Ghazali studied in his hometown and uh, then went to Nishabur to complete his education. He quickly approached power uh, and entered the court of the Seljuk Empire and at the age of 34 was appointed as the head of the Nizami Baghdad. That means this is a very famous, the most important school of Muslim in the world. That means 
the, at that time, there were two important uh, school, Islamic school, uh, that means uh, schools. One is Nizamia in Baghdad and then Al-Azhar in Egypt. Al-Azhar was uh, built and also was controlled by the Fatimid and Baghdad Nizamiye was uh, under the control of uh, Abbasis. So these two schools also politically and ideologically were competing each other, that is Baghdad and uh, Egypt at that time, Al-Azhar. So, when he joined the uh, court of the uh, Abbasid, naturally he should compete with Al-Azhar in Egypt. So the competition was between, but ideologically was between this Al-Azhar and Nizamiya, and he, that means Ghazali should play a very important role in education and promotion and advertising and also in sending missionary forces in the area. So after uh, uh, he became uh, responsible for the school, the main school in the uh, Baghdad, uh, Nizamiya, so he has to cover all these areas also about propaganda because at that time, in fact, the Fatimis also had a lot of propaganda and missionaries in these areas. So both sides were competing uh, at the missionary level and also tried to influence each other uh, territory. No, I am going to talk about, um, but I have to also mention that uh, these areas uh, were against uh, philosophy. Then uh, the area which were under the influence of Fatimis, they were through philosophy and theology. And this area also were uh, ruled by mostly the rulers and ulamas uh, of Maliki. They were also against uh, philosophical thinking and rationalism. So these areas, these two areas in the uh, uh, West and the, in East, they were against rationalism and philosophy. But Fatimi uh, region was influenced uh, by Islamic philosophy and theology. So, uh, uh, from the uh, philosophical point of view, from the ideological point of view also, the situation was like this. So now the current uh, thought in the Western uh, side of the Mediterranean, this side, so the current of thought in the in Andalusia, Maliki school of thought of law, a school of jurisprudence, and also including Zahiri school of interpretation. And that means they mostly literally, they were depending on literally meaning of uh, you know, the primary uh, resources. So Ibn Hazm is the leader of this school of jurisprudence and also interpretation. However, these areas, that means these areas were, the, were under the influence of uh, this ideology, that means under the Maliki and against philosophy, and they were following interpretation of Zahiru and especially Ibn Haz interpretation school. And the philosopher, the, the philosophy of Muslim also, Muslim rationalist and philosopher also was another movement, which uh, not very strong movement, but they were also very active in this area. And then we have also Sufi movement uh, at that era, at that, at that age. So these three main uh, current were active during the Ghazali's period. Now I am going to see how is the uh, reaction of these three groups towards the Ghazali's thought. Uh, Maliki uh, uh, scholars were against uh, the thought of uh, Ghazali because they were against Sufism. So normally the, these two groups, normally these uh, uh, Maliki and uh, uh, Sufis, both of them were against philosophy, uh, philosopher and philosophical thinking and theology. But these two, again, they have their own uh, schools, Maliki school, uh, the scholars, they used to oppose philosopher and philosophy, uh, the, the Sufis, both of them. So uh, the reaction, it is clear since the uh, 
Ghazali was Sufi, so uh, uh, this group were opposing the Sufism, that means these two group opposing the uh, Ghazali thought. This, uh, the Maliki opposed the Ghazali because of the, because he belonged to the uh, Sufi and also he belonged to uh, Shafi school. Philosopher, philosopher also were against uh, against Ghazali because he was uh, against philosopher and philosophy, and also he was Sufi, which normally uh, philosopher normally do not like the method of uh, Ishraq and the you know Sufism type of studies. So this was the reaction in generally. So they were against, uh, the, these two group were against Ghazali, but Sufis welcomed uh, the Ghazali's thoughts in Andalusia and Morocco. The ruler of that area, Morabetun, was since was under the influence of Maliki. So they were against, uh, against uh, Ghazali thought. So they strongly uh, opposed all these group that means these two philosopher and uh, sufism and some of them are present and also some of them even killed uh, by the rulers so uh, the most important uh, things happen when the uh, mubahedun wants to take power from the morabetun and mubahedun is the mubahedun movement led by led by Ibn Tumar. Who was the Ibn Tumar? Ibn Tumar was a student of Ghazali. So Ghazali, in fact, uh, as I told you, he has, uh, he has graduated this person and trained this person. Uh, when he raised and became very uh, powerful person, he came to Morocco first and he started his movement here. And then little by little, he got power in, the, uh, in this region. And all this region covered by, uh, came under the rule of Ibn Tumar uh, movement. So Mubahedun became a very powerful movement in this area. And, and later on, he came to uh, invited during the, because here this area, normally the, the tribes were competing each other. He came to his he sent his missionaries and also influence. Finally, they decided to conquer the uh, what is that the Andalusia to take power here from the Mubahedun. So it was a big change taking the power also in Andalusia from uh, Morabetun. So uh, you can see that Ibn Tumar, as a student of uh, Ghazali, uh, brought not only ideological, ideological change here, he brought political change. And he, uh, by the help of the Abbasid, and also by the fatwa, the support of the fatwa of Ghazali, they were able to control all this area. And finally, the Murabitun lost everything to the Mubahedun. So you can see that <clears throat> when he was alive, when Ghazali was alive, he was just see how the Mubahedun took power. That means his student and his followers took all these areas. However, that means when I am talking, especially the, the Yusuf, Yusuf Ibn Taj film at that time was very famous <clears throat> because uh, he has uh, conquered in the uh, Andalusia of, uh, in, during that time. So <clears throat> here I want to just mention, you see politically and also ideologically, this part has a very strong influence on this part, uh, but in between uh, the uh, Fatimi were ruling. And even when they want to pass, sometimes they have to pass through, um, what is that, this way, not directly from the Fatimist area. Sometimes they have to come to us, uh, uh, two days Sudan and then come and uh, contact with the, this region, some of them. Uh, 
So in general, we can see that uh, the, uh, the uh, Western part of um, uh, Mediterranean was strongly under the influence of um eastern part that means baghdad so they were under the they, they really had a very important influence politically ideologically and they finally changed the system in this area so mm -hmm. finally i have to, to go, yeah yeah i was finished i came to mm -hmm. conclusion so as i uh try to uh talk about this you can see that during the medieval age in fact the influence of uh, Eastern Mediterranean and the uh, schools of thought and political uh, religious and also the jurisprudence uh, school of thought, all they had a very, and Sufism also, they had very ideologically had a very great impact on the Western part of the Mediterranean region. And Persian uh, also, uh, since they were the, uh, they were the, they were the driving force of all these uh, school of thought, they had uh, also very strong influence on that area. As the, and the, the uh, Ghazali was one of them because Ghazali was uh, born in, uh, born and raised in Persian area at that time. So he was a leading uh, person during that period, and he had a lot of influence ideologically, politically. Uh, so it seems that the role of uh, the uh, the role of also the role of the uh, rulers. When I am a study, when I have studied and uh, had a research on this issue, normally uh, rulers uh, and used to belong to one of the school of uh, jurisprudence, but in fact when the situation was very tough they used to change uh, their ideology from one school to, uh, to other school when they saw one school is for example very influential uh, Yusuf Ibn uh, Tashfin, for example, he at the beginning, he uh, got a lot of uh, support from the Baghdad and from the Ghazali. And when he took power and after they uh, controlled the area, uh, his son took power. And then, in fact, for some time, they were against Ghazali. But uh, later on, again, uh, they have changed, though they were Maliki and they were Sufi, they changed their mind because the atmosphere were against them. So they have changed their ideologically. Uh, finally, the rulers, they have changed, the Mubahidin rulers changed their ideologically against philosophy, philosopher, and against also Sufism, and against, uh, against Ghazali at that time. So with this, I conclude my paper, and I hope I was able to <clears throat> transfer my information and share my information with you. Thank you so much for hearing.